Again, same concept, using the rocks to kind of point a line to the hotel. Do you mind being on camera? What? Do you mind being on camera? No, no. So I stupidly did not bring my lens cloth. It's got this like omnipresence to it, like it almost feels evil. Just remember there's more room on the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame. Welcome back everyone and I hope you're all doing well. We're currently on our way to our next adventure. We're headed to a place called Fogo Island. I've been told it's a really unique island and that we should definitely go since I'm already up here. But we have to get there, take a one hour ferry ride over to the island. And what's really cool is there's this five star luxury hotel on the island. I, I won't be staying in there, I'll be staying in Casa Rastinante, but the, the architecture of the hotel is super unique. And with the combination of, it's predicted to be clear skies for the next couple nights, hopefully, and there's a high chance for a high KP index. Now the KP index, if you're unfamiliar, is what typically is used to help predict the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis, uh, depending on what you like to call it. So if all the stars align, literally, uh, maybe we can take some really cool Aurora photos with the really cool architecture of that hotel on Fogo Island. But we gotta get there first and I gotta make one stop before we get there. You know, when you live a life where you don't really know where you're going or what you're doing or what the heck the future holds, it's always nice to see a rainbow right at the end of the road of where you're going because damn if that's not a good sign to tell you that you're heading the right direction. So feeling pretty good and uh, we're basically almost there. Will they have space? Hello, how are you? Just going to the Fogo Island. Is there still space? Sweet. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, here we go. If you're lost and you're lonely, go and figure out why. Take a trip to your dark side, go on and have a good cry. We're all lonely, yeah, we're all lonely together. I want to see your sadness, I want to share your sin. I want to. All right, I got some food in me. Walking to the hotel now with the intention of kind of scouting for compositions for the Aurora. I want to have a couple options because. You never know which way the Aurora is going to be. So I kind of want to get a good idea of what this place looks like uh, before it's dark. But also the sunset looks like it could be promising. And I was really having a tough time finding something quickly that I wanted to photograph for sunset potentially. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone, scout the hotel, and hopefully maybe catch something for sunset. I want to bleed your blood and I want to be let in. Don't you just, don't we all just want to be together? Okay, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to be in the composition of the photo I'm trying to take. Uh, just remember there's more room on the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame, so the building isn't actually cut off. But this is what I could find in a scramble. Over here, you can see the sun is right behind those clouds right there. And I'm trying to keep that in the shot because right now the composition, as you can tell, is very balanced towards the left of the frame. But I have all these rocks right here that are really cool because all of the lines in these rocks point in the direction of the hotel. But then the hotel is facing down through the frame this way and everything is pointing this way, so if the sun doesn't come out, it does not balance the right half of the frame. However, the good news is, if it doesn't end up peeking out, I could just move the camera a little bit this way, zoom in a little bit, and then forego anything with the sun included. All right, so the sun got blocked. You can't really see it in this picture. So I just moved up a little bit, where I'm a little bit closer to the hotel, 
and I'm using these rocks in the foreground here. Again, same concept, using the rocks to kind of point a line to the hotel, and it contrasts really well. There's a lot of cool lines happening because of the way this hotel is designed. Obviously, architecturally, I have to imagine it was designed that way for a reason. But let me hit record on my camera here. So what's happening is, oh, there's my phone. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a professional. So like I said, I have these rocks down here that point up to the hotel. And then the hotel is uh, contrasted by pointing down this way in my, at 14 mil, obviously things look even more angular. So the hotel isn't that angular in real life and neither are the rocks in the bottom of the frame. But everything just kind of points to kind of right here and I'm hoping that some of these clouds are gonna catch a little bit of color. I might stick a long ND filter on here and do a nice long exposure and get some, uh, just some high key, high contrast kind of image. Again, we're not really getting the light that I wanted, but uh, we're gonna try a few things. And uh, I really like this particular composition. I think it works really well for how this looks. Although obviously I'm not an architecture photographer, but a lot of the stuff applies to landscape photography and I'm just you know, using those concepts. So I'm gonna take that shot then I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna go grab my uh, 10 stop ND and do a really long exposure and uh, see what we come up with. This is fun, this is cool. I'm, I don't normally get to do this. So I'm uh, pretty excited for this episode. I hope you are too. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining along here in uh, Fogo Island. I mean, just, this is awesome. It's so cool. Together. I want to see your sadness. I want to share your sin I want to bleed your blood And I want to be let in You know, photography is a fickle beast because as soon as the sun went down, meaning I stopped taking the normal exposures and I put my 10-stop ND on, literally all the clouds went away. I took one 10-stop ND shot, about a minute and a half exposure, and I looked at it and I was like, why is this all blue sky? And then I looked behind the hotel and all the clouds are gone. Literally, the second the sun went down, meaning the light was actually gone, the clouds just disappeared. So as soon as I, <laughs> I just, I can't do anything but laugh at it at this point. But pretty cool spot. I don't necessarily really care, honestly, if I got anything great photography wise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up and I'm just gonna walk around the building and just kind of get an idea of different angles that would work uh, from shot to shot. And then that's gonna be it for this evening. So join me along for that and uh, yeah, buckle up. Keep your all arms and appendages inside the vehicle at all times. Let's go for a little walkie walk. I don't know, I'm, I've had too much caffeine, I'm sorry. All right, so direct on, we kind of just lose all of the angles of the building, which I'm not a huge fan of, but there is this nice rock line that kind of comes this way that's cool. I mean, to be completely honest, if the Aurora happens to be back there, uh, it's really not gonna matter the angles of the building because the Aurora is gonna be the focus and it's all gonna be up there. All right, we're on the other side, as you can tell. It's got this really cool room that comes out right here uh, that's lit up right now and also reflecting a little bit of this blue hour light. And I'm thinking, again, there's probably not any bad angles. So if the Aurora is back there, it's gonna look great. But there's also this really cool building over here. The moon is coming up right there. Uh, and that building is also kind of interesting so I think what we're gonna do is, I have a good idea of what the angles look like. And as long as the Aurora isn't out there, meaning I'm just shooting from way back there, I think, uh, I don't think we can really go wrong. So yeah, so that's gonna wrap up this evening, unless of course, Aurora happens, and I'll bring you along for the ride. I don't know where we're gonna go next, if that doesn't happen, so stay tuned. Probably gonna shoot some more architecture tomorrow. Like I said, the next couple days are supposed to be pretty nice. Uh, so. I'm hoping the weather is actually correct. All right, see you tomorrow. Together. Hey, part of the restaurant, I just wanna say thank you for all the support. And if you wanted to help support me in more ways than just liking or subscribing to this channel, you can do that with a little link down below the like button. You can find things like my 2024 calendar, which I just released. It's an absolutely great holiday gift for a friend or family member or even yourself. It's got QR codes on the calendar, so if you get it for someone else, they can scan those and they can see how the images that are on their wall were taken. It's really cool, I'm really proud of it. 
I definitely think you should check it out. And if that's not anything you're interested in, maybe just checking out my Patreon for early access to some editing tips or postcards once a month. Or maybe you want to learn editing, you can check out my Lightroom editing companion that's linked down there, which is this thing I've created that integrates straight into Lightroom to teach you how to edit. No matter what, maybe you just want to share this with someone that's into travel or photography, and you can just hit the like button and subscribe if you're really into it. Regardless, I appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. Thank you for watching. All right. Good morning, everyone. Woke up, got out, took a test shot. Couldn't tell if I could see anything or not. And normally, uh, so I wasn't expecting the Aurora to be dancing or anything, but I have had experiences where I can't see it with my eyes, but my camera can see it. So what I'll do is just get out, bump up the ISO really high and just take a nice quick handheld shot because I don't care what the actual image looks like. I just want to see if there's any color in the sky. So I drove over to the hotel and I did that and uh, nothing. Stay tuned. Uh, Northern Lights was a bust, but glad I tried. Uh, good morning, everyone. As you can tell, it is not sunrise. And that is because I stayed up for sunrise but it was just clear blue skies. And if you're familiar or a regular viewer on this channel or just a landscape photographer, you know that clear blue skies are not ideal. We want just the right amount of clouds in the sky. So I went back to sleep, uh, but we're still getting some really nice light here for some architecture photography, specifically photography of the houses on the island, which you can see a little bit in the background. So I'm gonna walk down here and see what we can find. Don't you adjust. Don't we all just want to be together? Leave what's heavy What's heavy behind So something you're really going to notice, or if you haven't already, is a lot of the buildings here are very colorful. You've got reds and yellows and blues, and sometimes some really wacky colors. And Newfoundland is kind of actually known for that. It reminds me a lot of Norway. The color palette's a little bit different. They get a little bit more eccentric here. Something else we're gonna highlight a bit is some of these storage units that are out on the water. I really wanna find out what they are for. So if you happen to know, if you're a maritime -er, uh, and you know what they store in those things, let me know, because I've seen a few that you can't even access without possibly being on a boat. I'm assuming it's some kind of boating or fishing equipment, but. I really don't know, so I would love to know what typically is stored in those. Anyways, we're gonna keep walking around. I took a few shots here, but there's just a ton of different shots that we're gonna explore around, photographing some of these historical buildings, a lot of the colors, a lot of the feelings of not just Fogo Island, but Newfoundland in general. out snapping photos and a guy pulls up uh, to show me his books and he was an old fisherman here and it's the history of fishing on the island and he told me what's in those he told me what's in those buildings that I just asked about it's uh, cod the fish and we're gonna go well stay tuned do you mind being on camera what? do you mind being on camera no, 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 okay no, no, come to, wants, wants to do a portrait every now and again I said a monkey looking that's why he wants to do a portrait he said yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'll show you a portrait Okay. Hello. Hello, are you okay? We got a gentleman here. Huh? We got a gentleman here. We just had, uh, we just had these posters on. Just, oh. Just came in the You have a look at them. Right. I did, did I see one of your cards on the ferry? Yeah. You okay. Know, yeah. You got to sign it for me. I'll Does sign. that cost extra? Yeah. <laughs> 100 for 50. Ugh. Well, that was just an absolutely lovely little time. Roy, um, I was taking photos, this photo specifically, and he pulls up and he tells me that he's a writer on the island. He's obviously a retired fisherman and he's written about different stages of just different stories. And he was telling me that every chapter in this particular book that he sold me uh, is just another, just a different story about things on the island. The book that he sells me has a chapter in it called Stages. We're gonna go to that chapter real quick. And basically, I'll keep it short, is that just like in Norway where they hang the fish uh, to air dry, they stage all the cod fishing. So if a fisherman goes out and gets cod, 
that's where they go and clean all the fish and start to dry it out. For tilting, which context, that is where I am here on the island of Fogo. In hundreds of other outport settlements, the fishery was its lifeblood, and while the harvesting of cod required effort, ingenuity, and courage, the most time-consuming work was done in the stages. These structures perch precariously on pillings or on wharves, crowded tiltings islands and shoreline. Behind them lay a somewhat orderly conglomeration of flakes and stores is essential in drying and curing of the fish. It was to these stages, both morning and evening, that boats heavily laden with cod tied up to unload their catch. So yeah, that's what the buildings are. They're called stages. I cannot believe that I was just literally asking the question. He just shows up, invites me to his home, super hospitable, and just genuinely felt super heartwarming. And I am feeling so much happy energy that it's uh, making me extremely happy to just be here and get to share this story with you guys. But it's just, I mean, life sometimes is uh, very, very funny considering I asked the question and out pops a man that writes books and tells me about the stories of the island and I don't know, just life is really good. Ah, The weather has changed. It is now far more overcast and we're not getting that nice little speckled highlights of light coming through. So I'm gonna walk around, probably keep taking some more photos and carry on with our day as the light changes. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. Glad you're here. Glad I'm here. I gotta fix myself up a little bit. Yeah. One of you gotta be in the middle. Right. Who wants to be in the middle? You? Yeah, Come yeah you can oh, here, okay. next oh, yeah. to me. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I'm filming. Hold on. I've had some good days And I've had some worse But none compared to the days that I had with you And I've had some high times Okay, so we're at one of those modern pieces of architecture I was telling you about earlier that are scattered throughout the island. It's got a really cool intricate design and it's obviously right here on the coast. You'll also probably notice, maybe for your keen eyed viewers, that I'm shooting on the R7 and not on the R5. I'm pretty sure this thing is shaking way too much. All right, I've got that station on some rocks now, so hopefully it's not moving around as much. I'm not entirely sure my mic's even gonna be able to pick me up very well. But as I was saying, my 18 to 35 lens that I have here for crop equals about, I wanna say 28 to 55. And that's the focal range that I want to be shooting a lot of this architecture at because I like that for some of these shots. And I don't have anything between 35 and 70 for my full frame. Anyways, it's really windy, so I'm going to walk around and try to take some moody shots. Like I said, the light isn't great, but it is pretty high contrast, so maybe we can convert these to black and white or something along those lines and get a useful image. The architecture is really cool here on the coast uh, because of the way it contrast with the ocean and the fact that it's just planted up on some of these rocks looks really cool so let's see what we can come up with but none compared to the times that i had with you i take out a loan for just one day alone to run back the time in slow motion i'd sell my guitars i'd spend life behind bars Take one more trip through the story night Cause this was the best day of my life Thanks for the best day of my life So I stupidly did not bring my lens cloth and all of the things that I brought. So I have to do the old fashioned way with the t-shirt. Oh, I love these colors. There's some greens and some blues. And we just have this bright white house. I just gotta find a composition I like that's safe. 
because uh, a lot of the rocks right below me are wet. This might be a task for the wide angle. All right, I've switched to the wide over here, and I'm kind of taking a shot that's using these waves that crash and kind of circle back. You can see here, right there, and they circle back to the, the structure there. As you can tell, it's pretty gray and overcast, so I'm kind of just using that mood to uh, heighten the colors, try to see some of the blue in the water, some of the green on the hill here. The problem is, uh, every time a wave crashes, I get hit by sea spray. And so I gotta wipe my lens off every shot. It's pretty crazy out here. I don't know if the shot is even worth it, but I took a few and I'm gonna carry on. So here's the shot that I just took with the wide. I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna get the heck out of here. <laughs> I take out a loan for just one day alone. Run back the time in slow motion I'd sell my guitars, I'd spend life behind bars To take one more trip through the starry night Cause this was the best day of my life Thanks for the best day of my life you ease. Can't promise you peace, my boy. Okay, we're walking to another one of the more modern pieces of architecture here, but the conditions are uh, not necessarily great. I don't think they're going to work as well for this particular piece that I'm walking up to. So all I brought is my phone and the R7 with the 18 to 35, which is again 28 to 55 equivalent. We're going to see what we're working with. Woo! This wind is just... Oh my god! With heart on my sleeve I'll give you every bit of me I'll give you every bit of me What's really cool about a lot of these designs by this group, the Saunders group or whatever they're called every time I approach one I can just go around the whole building and a different photo emerges. So from like this angle versus just a little bit over here. And this angle are completely different. And then facing the front of it as you're walking in is also very different. And it's like there's no bad angles no matter how you rotate around the building. And it means I just spend my time walking around the whole thing just taking different images, not really knowing which one is going to look the best, but I feel like that's the cool thing about it is you can't really go wrong no matter what shot you take, no matter what angle you take. What's interesting about this one is because it's all black, it's got this like omnipresence to it, like it almost feels evil, like I'm uh, about to uh, embark on or find somebody's uh, lair where they're plotting evil twists or something, I don't know, but that's how it feels. And I'm also trying to include some of the landscape around it so that it kind of has uh, some color in it that goes with the, the black and white and just kind of places it here in Newfoundland because that's important. Very cool. All right, I'm going to keep walking around and see what else we can find. I'll take out a loan for just one day alone To run back the time in slow motion I'll sell my guitars, I'll spend life behind bars To take one more trip through the starry night This was the best day of my life All right, good morning everyone. Well, it's not a great morning, but it's a good morning. I woke up for sunrise, but it was pretty much overcast, so didn't shoot anything and it was supposed to be sunny today, like bright and sunny. I was kind of looking forward to it because I haven't really gotten a lot of just bright sunny days. And instead, uh, I'm not sure you can see it on the footage, but it is just overcast and fire, forest fire smoke, which is super random considering it's almost October. But we're gonna walk over here and try to find another one of those modern architecture pieces uh, and shoot it but I'm not entirely sure any of this stuff is going to work out just because of the atmosphere and the way the background uh, and just the light in general.
All right, well, this shot isn't necessarily working because of all this debris down here. Clearly, they've been renovating this and fixing it up. I think it's about 10 years old at this point. But there's still some damage on the stair down there. And something else you'll notice is a little Easter egg is on the very far left of your screen. Uh, that's actually the hotel, if you can see it, or believe it or not. But I got to be honest with you guys. I'm not really feeling inspired today, photography-wise. Even though yesterday was grueling, uh, out in the 50 mile an hour winds, cold, sea spray, you know, having to wipe my camera down, having to wipe me down, couldn't stop with my runny nose. I really enjoyed yesterday. I really felt happy to be finding images regardless of the results of the images. Today, I'm not really feeling that. None of these compositions are really calling out my name, but mostly just the light. The, the sun being blocked by fire smoke is really uh, bringing me down in terms of feeling inspired or happy to be taking these photos. But the reality is I'm having less fun taking the images. Maybe my results are the same. Maybe the results would be better today, uh, but I'm not enjoying it as much. And that means that I don't want to sit here and take my camera out and walk around and find compositions or try to get creative because I'm just not enjoying it. I'm not inspired by the light. And sometimes that happens. And I think what's really interesting about this particular video is that the results of the images, I could probably take the same images I took yesterday in today's light and they would look very similar. It's just me that's different. I'm feeling less inspired. I'm feeling less motivated. And uh, I'm just not enjoying it as much. And that's totally okay. The reality is if you're a photographer and you go out sometimes and, you don't, and you're at a beautiful place or you're somewhere super unique, I mean, this is pretty dang unique, and you're like, I don't even really want to take a photo. That's okay, it happens. I go out sometimes, bag, I'm filming stuff, and I just sit there and I'm like, no, nope, not today. You have to remember that you can't be inspired every day. You have, to, you have to counteract the weight of those happy, inspired, you know, illustrious days of photography with days where you're kind of like, yeah, I'm not gonna shoot anything. So I'm gonna take a few more images of this since I'm out here and uh, they could be kind of cool. And I'll show this to you right now. After that uninspiring morning, I actually ended the episode and decided to leave the island. But I think I'm going to end the episode here because... But the island had different plans for me. I drove to the ferry and the line was unusually long. And after waiting some time, I found out that the ferry was actually broken down for the day. And to me, this was a sign that I wasn't done here yet. So I turned around and decided to go explore the last studio on the island that was up in the mountains. And I'm so glad that I did because it completely turned my spirits around. That night, I also couldn't pass up another attempt at photographing the hotel without any thoughts of the aurora or trying to film anything. I found some unique angles and shapes that really complemented the architecture's geometry. Clearly, I wasn't meant to leave yet, and I'm glad that I didn't. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this long-winded tour of the island. By the time you're watching this video, maybe I'll have my guide up, so be sure to check out the description down below. And as always, thanks for being here. There's got to be a rainbow out there somewhere. We just got to go find them. Later.